So far, we've covered Clausewitz's view of the nature of war. We've covered the fog of war, the friction of war, uh, war as a art, and we've covered what Clausewitz might call operations, really how do armies actually operate uh, in the field against their enemy. So now we're gonna to go to a more abstract view, and this is Clausewitz's War and Politics. Now just, I'll make something very clear here. I mentioned at the very beginning that Clausewitz did not become very popular in the United States until after World War II, and that was really with the advent of the Cold War. Uh, politics played a big, big role uh, in our view of military operations. And so Clausewitz's work actually became very popular for us. So saying that, let's start Clausewitz and war and politics. Okay, so what I'm gonna cover now is what is war? What is it? Well, Clausewitz says it's pure violence. Now, to, to bring some light to this, I'm gonna pause right here, and we're gonna cover an ancient Greek philosopher. Now, I am not saying uh, this philosopher is Plato, one of the big three philosophers. Now, I am not saying that Clausewitz is a proponent of Plato, but his ideas uh, really reflect Plato's ideas. And if you understand Plato, you can understand uh, Clausewitz. So going back to uh, ancient Greeks, Plato, one of the big three philosophers, is Plato, Aristotle, and later Immanuel Kant. But why is Plato important? Well, Plato ultimately says there's two worlds. Uh, there's this world we're here, and there's another world. You might call it heaven. He calls it the world of forms. And believe it or not, we all have Platonism in us. We all think platonically. Now, I'm going to give you an example. Have you ever seen a, uh, a hamburger or a great sandwich? And, you, and it, the thing looks great, it's beautiful. You're like, oh my gosh, it's, it's almost perfect. Now you're seeing this sandwich, you recognize that there's so many great things about it, but, it, but it's not perfection, and this usually with anything. This one hamburger, this one sandwich you're looking at, it's not perfect. It's very close, but it's not perfect. There's something missing about it. Well, this comes from Plato. What well, Plato says, uh, what Plato would say is, in this world above us, this heaven, there is actually a form, an idea, which is actually a concrete thing. And it is actually the perfect hamburger, perfect. And what you're seeing in this world is an impure reflection, a, uh, a smoky mirage or image of that hamburger here. It reflects many things of what's up there, but it's still impure because it's just a reflection. Uh, it, it's the same thing, take, uh, have you seen the, a great looking man or a great looking woman? You're like, oh gosh, look at them, they're gorgeous, almost perfect. It's the same concept. Plato said that perfect man, a perfect woman that you see is actually up there floating. And again, just a mirage image. So this is really the idea of perfection versus what you see on the ground, an impure reflection. Well, Clausewitz says war actually has a perfect form. Real war is pure violence, pure. And the example he gives, uh, I believe he gives, is an exploding mine. So imagine you have a mine in the ground and it goes off. And it's just pure, unadulterated violence, power shoots out. Nothing obstructs it. Clausewitz says that's war. That's really what war is. War is pure, unadulterated violence. Now, contrast that to back to the wars of maneuver. Remember pre-Napoleonic days where there's wars, these armies go try to go behind one another, they try to compel each one to give up. That is not pure unadulterated violence at all. It's, it's violence, but it's minimized. It's not what Napoleon brought. Well, why is that? Well, ultimately, what limits? What limits war, according to Clausewitz? It's politics, it's politicians. And I'll give you an example. A historical example. Compare World War II to, let's say, uh, the war in Iraq starting in 2003. One was pure unadulterated violence against the Germans and Japanese. One was limited. It had limited goals, the Iraqi war. Now, Clausewitz says, he who goes closest to the purest form of war will win, always. Now, I know this is a lot of war talk, and we are talking about Clausewitz, but as a business leader, I think this is an interesting idea. It's almost as if you have to compare yourself 
to other leaders. You're competing against other leaders and your company is competing against other teams. Which organization, which person gets closest to being a successful leader? Well, what does that mean? Well, remember going back to uh, the strike of the eye. To be a successful leader, you, need, you have to know history, have uh, quick insights, be able to make conclusions on the spot. Your, people are training themselves. So in this sense, according to Clausewitz, the person who does the most, who, who works the hardest, who actually spends most of their time, or spends a great part of their time developing themselves, developing themselves will always be more successful um, than the other, always. And so you might say, well, yeah, it's obvious, but compare it to, to the militaries. When a nation goes to war and they strip away uh, rules of engagement, they strip away any kind of arbit artificial rules, and they go against another nation which has rules, uh, the side which has no rules is going to win, according to Clausewitz. So it's something to think about that what actually minimizes or reduces war's nature are politicians. Politics, it's politicians. And if you go against another foe who has no rules or artificial barriers that you impose, they have none, uh, chances are they might win, given that you're, there's a certain parity in people and equipment, so on and so forth. So that's a really interesting aspect to uh, Clouds, I think. If you like this video, please hit like and share it with your friends. Look, the more people who like Edge Challenges and watch it, the greater the impacts to community, business, and leaders.